Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make a print and emboss template for your embossing folders. And I'm going to use Silhouette Studio for this. And the first thing you need to do is you need to pick out an embossing folder that you think will work well for this. And the Doris newer folders are great for this because they publish clean images of their folders. And I'll show you why that's important in a minute. But I also like this one because it has some nice open area to use for a sentiment and has some areas that would lend themselves well to coloring. So this is the one I'm going to demonstrate. And the first thing we need to do is we need to go get an image. So we're going to go to our browser and go to Google and I'm just going to type in Doris Palm Tree Embossing Folder. You would just type in the name of the one that you have and I'm going to click on images and it's going to bring up the images and what we're going to want are these nice black and white ones and I'm going to hover over this and it'll give me the dimensions 405 by 605, 500 by 500, that just means it's got some extra white space on the edges so this one will work. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to tell it to view image. It's a nice crisp image which is what I want. Now since I have designer edition I could just copy and paste this from Google it into Silhouette Studio, but if you don't have the designer edition, you just have basic, you can't paste. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to save this image and you're just going to want to put it somewhere you can get to it, like your desktop. Now we're going to go back to Silhouette Studio and open up a new document here and I'm going to drag the image that we just downloaded from Google onto the mat or again I would paste it if I was using DE. The next thing we want to do is trace this so we're going to go to the trace button, select trace area, select the whole thing, uncheck high pass and click on trace. That's all we need to do. We're done and I'm going to fill this with a color. I'm going to choose red just so we know which one is our trace. Now, this looks great. It's nice and crisp. It's got good, good solid lines, but it's not the right size. Again, this was an image from the internet, so it's not sized to fit the folder, and we need it to fit our folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our folder in the scanner. I folded the folder flat, put it face down in the scanner, put a black piece of paper behind it just to give it some contrast. I scanned it and then I'm going to bring this scan into Silhouette Studio. So here's my trace and here's my scan. Very important to save it as a JPEG because if it's a JPEG it will be the proper size which is important because I'm using this scan just to get the size. In other words we've already got the image here, we've got the size here, we need to get the two together. So the first thing we're going to do is straighten this and I happen to know from measuring that the Doris folders are 4.25 by 5.75. So I'm going to use my scale tool and I'm going to type in 4.25 by 5.75 and this is going to do two things. One is it's going to confirm to me that my JPEG is the right size because you can see that fits the folder almost exactly. And the other thing it's going to do is going to give me a reference to where I can scale against. This part is a little bit tricky because you, you can only rotate from the top and sometimes you need to be able to see from the bottom. So I want to get this positioned on the screen where I can see well and I want to select my scan image. I want my rectangle to stay the same and then I'm going to rotate the scan image until it is in the rectangle as evenly as possible so that I know that it's square. That looks pretty good. Now that I know that I've got that square I can bring this back and I want to bring it to the front and I want to go to the fill advanced and want to make this transparent so that I can lay it over this image and see where it fits. So I'm just going to start laying this over and moving it on top. And 
until I think it's right. And I'm going to look at some small details, like this little wedge here, and some leaves here to sort of use as my reference point. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this video, but you do want to spend some time when you're doing this for real, because it's going to take a little bit of doing to make sure that you've got it exactly right. And if you're having trouble, one thing you want to suspect is that you didn't have it rotated properly. But once you get it to where you think it's lining up pretty good, then you want to take this and you can clear everything else off your page. I will fill this with black again or, or maybe a dark gray. The outline will not print and I will turn it so that I can get two to a page and then just because I'm printing anyway I'll make another one and maybe make it a little bit smaller and then I will print this I will have to cut off the top and I will put them in to my folder, the printout into the folder, and I see which one fits the best. And then I will do the trial and error process from there. But using this scan and this trace, I've had very good success on the first try. So that's a, an easy way to do it. Then once you have this, let's say we've tried this, this original here was just the right size, then we can we can make a card front, we can set it up however we want it. In the template that I did, I used the knife tool to go across here and separate the trees from the water. And then I went in here and used the knife tool to separate the different pieces of the tree from the trunk. You can do this to separate it out for different colors or just use it as a guide to know where to place your text. However you want to do it works fine. Here's what my final template looked like and you can see where I've separated out the leaves, the trunk, and the water. I wrapped some text here and just put this here and then also because this particular folder has print on the bottom and on the sides it doesn't work to just fold it into a card so I made this a card front so I put a, a guideline here so that I would know when I'm designing but you can once you've got this shape this is this is the hard part just get this shape that's the right size once you've got that you can make your template however you want and I hope when you do I hope you'll share these templates on your blog or whatever and let me know and let and so that I can link them up and we can get a great library going so this is a great way for the Doris folders that have the the published images very quick and easy way to make a template out of them also, someone on Facebook let me know that the hot off the press folders have black printed on the folder. So you can combine these steps and you can scan that. And when you scan that, you get the black image and the size at the same time. So the folders from hot off the press are also very good for this and easy to make a template from. So I hope you'll make templates. I hope you'll share them. Again, part one showed how to use the templates that I already made. Part two shows how to actually press them with the embossing folder. And so now I've shown you how to make your own templates with the Doris folders. I'll make one more video to show you how to make it with folders that don't have a clear image. Thanks for watching.